Hello friends, my name is Mahima Mishra and I am your teacher educator for English language pedagogy. Today we are going to discuss the techniques of teaching nursery rhymes and poetry. Poem is a potential medium to express ourselves and to relate it to our lives. By regularly listening to poems and songs, children comprehend the basic structure of language. When we enter school, the first thing that we learn are nursery rhymes. We learn nursery rhymes so that we can start memorizing, we can start mimicking and we can start copying our teachers and learn the language through regularly using it. The children learn to comprehend the language, the children learn the basic structure of English language when they recite poems in school. Why do we teach rhymes in school? It helps the children become comfortable in the language. When we speak the poem several times, we learn to express ourselves in that language. It helps the children articulate the language. It's a foreign language, so we need to speak it many times. We need to talk in that language. We need to use those words so that we become comfortable in that language. We'll start with reciting a poem by Walter de la Mer, Silver. Slowly, silently, now the moon walks the night in her silver shoon. This way and that she peers and sees silver fruit upon silver trees. One by one the casements catch her beams beneath the silvery thatch. Couched in his kennel like a log, with paws of silver sleeps the dog. From their shadowy coat the white breasts peep of doves in silver feathered sleep. A harvest mouse goes scampering by with silver claws and silver eye. And moveless fish in the water gleam by silver reeds in a silver stream. When we recite a poem like that, we get to know a lot of things about poem. Children get to learn new vocabulary. The poem Silver is fit for classes 3 and above. So when we read this poem, we learn a few words which are not very familiar for the class 3 children. Suppose they ask you what is peers, we are supposed to tell them. Peers means looking intently, observing. They might find difficulty in understanding the word thatch. Thatch means sloping. Couched, snuggled, coat, there is a small rectangular box kind of a thing made for the pigeons to stay in. Scampering means running haphazardly. Gleam, shine. So they learn a lot of new words. They learn to express themselves in newer words. Their word bank gets enhanced. It also enhances their creative ability. When the children see how the poet has described certain scenes which are so normal but in such a beautiful way. They also try to copy that. They also try to improve on their own expressions and they try to create new styles of saying similar things. They learn about expression, they learn about tone, they learn about proper pronunciation. So when we are reading out a poem, we need to be very careful that our expression in reading out the poem is according to the poem that we have chosen. The tone also needs to be very, very appropriate. It, this is a night poem, so we need to be soft, we need to be slow, we don't need to be in a hurry, we don't need to be very loud. Then there is proper pronunciation of the words, which is also very important, because this is the time that the children are learning new words, and once they learn it, if they learn it incorrectly, it becomes very difficult to unlearn what they have just learned. There are various techniques to teach poetry recitation. We can start with making them listening to the poem in the form of songs or video or audio tapes in the voice of famous actors or famous singers. There are various videos available on YouTube. There are various links that you can use and you can use them in your class. If you are comfortable, you can do the recitation on your own. We can also enact the poem. For example, when we have a poem like, I am a little teapot, short and stout, it's very easy to enact it. So, we can, say, we can say, I'm a little teapot, short and stout, this is my handle and this is my spout. When the water's boiling, hear me shout, just lift me up and pour me out. So, we have to use clear uh, pronunciation and we have to use the correct punctuations so that the child understands how we need to deliver the poem or how we need to recite the poem. Again, there is a poem, very small one, for nursery children, All of Me. My hands are for clapping, my arms can hug tight, my fingers can snap 
or can turn out the light. My legs are for jumping. My eyes help me see. This is my body and I love all of me. So when we speak the poem like this, the children understand the meaning also because we are trying to enact it out for them and they get to know exactly what we are pointing at. They enjoy it more because they get some activity to do and they really enjoy the session. We can also make them write their own poetry. This can be done through poems like Five Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed. I hope all of you have heard that one. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed, one fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor, the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So when we uh, recite a poem like that, we can ask the children to change the word, change the noun from monkeys to another one. That will give them a little bit of creativity and they will also understand that even though they change the word from monkeys to any other words, suppose like ponies, the rhythm should not be broken. So when they recite their poem, they will say, Five little ponies jumping on the bed, one fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more ponies jumping on the bed. So the rhythm remains the same, but the word has changed and it becomes their poem. They find a kind of, uh, uh, they kind, they find a kind of uh, love towards the poem because now it is their poem. They have made it on their own. They have owned it. So it gives them a lot of encouragement. They, it encourages their creativity. It encourages them to love poetry and understand poetry better. We must remember that we must always encourage the child positively and never ridicule the child. Because at times there is peer pressure. At times, if the child cannot uh, recite the poem properly in front of everyone, there are other children who will make fun of him. We need to be very, very vigilant about that because the child's self-concept, the child's self-confidence is our responsibility. Group activity. We can also have poetry learning through group activities. This activity is also meant for children of class 5. We can give them a situation walking through the jungle and we can ask them to extend the poem further by creating more lines. Once they have created their lines, they can discuss the lines with the teacher and they can come and present it in front of the whole class. We can also ask them, probe them further about what motivated them to write those lines. Walking through the jungle, what did I see? A big bad lion roaring at me. Walking through the jungle, what did I see? A long, long snake hissing at me. What through the walking through the jungle, what did I see? A little baby monkey roaring at me. So when the children come and present it, they present their own poem. It's, it's a group activity. Four or five children can be made to sit together and work on a single poem. Various groups come and present their poems in front of the whole class. This gives them a chance to also work on their leadership qualities. There will be some who will be more eager to come and recite the poem. And then there will be some who would be more eager to add more to the poem. So they will all learn how to find their own creative space and present the poem as a collective group. We can have an activity where the child is given blanks to fill in and that com comprises his poem. So the poem like happy to be me can be given with blanks. There's a blank for color of the child's hair. There's a blank for the co color of the child's eyes. There's a blank for the age of the child and there's a blank for the name of the child. So when the child fills in those blanks, the poem becomes his own poem and then he gets a chance to come and recite it in front of the whole class. Suppose the child fills in, black is my hair, black are my eyes, I'm eight years old and just the right size. My name is Soham and as you can see, I'm very happy to be me. So the child learns to love a poem. The child uh, understands that poems can be written by him as well. That gives him a, an affinity for poetry for poetry writing, for poetry learning, for poetry recitation. There are various tips that can be used for teaching poetry effectively in class. First thing is to be very well versed with the poem. Once the teacher enters the class, she should be well versed with the poem because if you go and fumble there, the child is looking at you and really, really uh, paying attention to all the nuances that you are picking up. 
we need to check the pronunciation of unfamiliar words and rehearse it before we recite it in class. So rehearsal of whatever you're going to do in class is also important, especially in teaching poetry. We need to be loud and confident. It is not necessary to be loud all the time. It depends on the ta tone of the poem. And if the poem requires, we need to be very loud. And if the poem doesn't require, we need to just raise our volume a bit so that even the last child can hear us. So loud and confident. That is very important. We need to be dramatic and expressive. Very, very dramatic and expressive. You can say, I hear thunder, I hear thunder. Hark, don't you? Hark, don't you? Bitter patter raindrops, bitter patter raindrops. I'm wet through, I'm wet through. So we have to learn to be dramatic, a little bit dramatic and very expressive when we are reciting a poem. We can check the tone of the poem. If the, if the poem is a happy one, we need to look happy, smile with a twinkle in the eye. If it's a sad one, we need to bring the tone a bit down. We cannot be too happy reciting a sad poem. If it's an in inspirational one, we need to give that kind of a motivation to the child while we are reciting the poem. Basically, we need to enjoy the poem. Enjoying the poem for the teacher is the most important thing to be able to teach very effectively. So to enjoy the poem, there are certain points that we must remember as teachers when we are teaching poetry in class that to enjoy the poem, we need to pay attention to a lot of things. For example, the genre, the tone of the poem that we have chosen. Sometimes the poem is a nature poem. Sometimes it's a motivational poem. Sometimes the tone is sad. Sometimes the tone is happy. So we need to be sure which genre, which tone we are supposed to stick to. Then we need to know the style of the poet. Sometimes the poet uses free verse. Sometimes the poet uses rhyming verse. So we need to know that style of the poem. Poetic devices. If we know the poetic devices, then we are able to highlight those points while we are reciting the poem. For example, alliteration. When we are teaching higher classes, we can even tell them what is alliteration. For example, in slowly, silently, now the moon, we can tell them sir, sir, slowly, silently. When we have the same sound consecutively in the poem, then it is called alliteration. Personification. Again, the poem, slowly, silently, now the moon walks the night in her silver shoon. The moon has been personified as a lady. So we need to point that out to the children so that they can imagine better. We can also do a little bit of uh, research on the poet's life and setting to the poem. For example, in Daffodils, when the poet William Wordsworth wrote that poem, he was going through a loss, a personal loss. He had lost a very dear cousin of his who was almost like his real brother. So when he wrote that poem, he started with, I wandered lonely as a cloud. So you can refer to that just to be able to tell the children why the poem is a sad one and how it ends in a happy note. Writing your own poetry can also inspire you to love poetry. So these are just a few tips that will help you teach poetry better and which will also help your children learn poetry better. Thank you so much. Meet, meet you again.